Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. I don't know what the ERA is. Error on average. Error on average. Some thought it was a brand of laundry detergent endorsed by my pal Chuck Norris. But most? That's a good question. I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's on, uh, on the older feminists. We didn't tell our story. We were so upset and hurt when the ERA did not pass. We all went home and sat down and cried. But we didn't tell the story. In the original Constitution, they purposely excluded women. That's the history. We well, can deny that it existed, but it did. This Constitution was written at a time when we had slavery and the status of wives, the legal status of wives, was the model for the legal status of slaves because, because we were chattel. The reality is you couldn't own property, you couldn't vote, you couldn't, um, you, you were essentially the possession of your father until you married. There were many brave people sheltering slaves on the Underground Railway. But when Susan B. Anthony and other women sheltered runaway wives, then some of the abolitionists themselves, the men said, ah, now you're going too far. They really do belong to their husbands. The new 14th Amendment guaranteed the right to vote regardless of race, but only for men. Black women, and all women, were not given voting rights. It also added the word male into our Constitution for the first time. And here's the kicker. In 1886, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment was found to protect corporations. But women had a long, hard fight ahead of them, jailed, beaten, and force-fed just to get the vote in 1920. Then, suffragist Alice Paul proposed ending inequality in one fell swoop by adding a few choice words to the U.S. Constitution to protect and include women. Equality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. The ERA was introduced in every congressional session starting in 1923 with no success. It was only voted on three times in 49 years. Then, in 1970, members of the newly formed National Organization for Women stormed Capitol Hill, demanding the ERA be heard by the full Congress. We are people who are fighting for our very economic survival. Congress agreed to vote. It passed with flying colors in both houses. President Nixon endorsed it. The ERA was sent to the 50 states for approval. 38 were needed to make it law. In the first year alone, 30 states ratified the ERA. Presidents Ford and Carter supported it, the United Auto Workers endorsed it, and Hollywood loved it. This women's movement seemed to have America on its side. When journalist and activist Gloria Steinem co-founded Ms., a magazine created for and operated by women, the first issue sold out in a week. The ERA seemed unstoppable. When the deadline came in 1979, 35 states had ratified the ERA, three states short. Because I was around when the ERA wasn't ratified. Because of toilets. Talk about ironic. To avoid sharing toilets, women lost equal rights under the law. The scare tactics successfully distracted the public from the real issues, such as equal pay, job discrimination, and violence. Congress extended the ratification deadline until June 13th of 1982, but... Time ran out for the Equal Rights Amendment today. The 24-word statement pledging equality for women under the Constitution fell three states short of ratification. But it has never been what the people wanted. National polls have always showed a majority of Americans favored ERA. But that did not stop the Republican Party from abandoning the amendment. Ronald Reagan opposed ERA. Until then, the ERA had never been a partisan issue. Both parties historically had supported it. ERA supporters say they will try again, but even they aren't saying when.